Hello, uh, you are welcome to this lecture. Um, today we want to learn something about the quality of complex numbers. In other words, what do we mean when we say that two complex numbers are equal? So assume that you have a complex number, let's call it Z1, and uh, this is equal to say A1 plus B1i. And you have a second a complex number Z2 is equal to, let's call this A2 plus B2i. We say that the two complex numbers are equal, right? Z1 is equal to Z2 if okay, the real parts of the complex numbers are equal and the imaginary parts are equal. So A1 has to be equal to A2 and and so both conditions must hold and B1 must be equal to B2. So when this holds, we see that the two complex numbers are equal. Which basically uh, means that two complex numbers are equal if the real parts of the complex numbers are equal. So the real part of Z1 is equal to the real part of Z2 and the imaginary part of Z1 is equal to the imaginary part of Z2. Basically that is that. So that is what we mean by two complex the quality of two complex numbers. They are equal in these conditions, in these conditions hold. Okay? For example, um, if I tell you that a complex number x plus i y is equal to another complex number, let's call it 2 minus whatever, let's call it 3i. If this complex number is equal to this, then by definition what it means is that the real part of this x must be equal to 2 and the imaginary part y must be equal to negative 3. Okay? So that very y doesn't really matter. So if this is true, what it means is that x has to be 2 and y has to be negative 3. Okay? Now let's look at some, um, some more examples of this. So this is very powerful. You can use the equality of complex numbers to solve so one, uh, we want to solve, solve, for instance, the equation, okay? This is an equation involving our complex numbers. So let's say you have 2 plus 3z minus z bar plus 5i is equal to 0. Uh, solve this, so you want to solve for um, z, what is z, okay? Now, as usual, when you are solving complex numbers, what you do is that you let z be equal to um, some standard complex number a plus b i, and then you try to find what a and b are. So plug this into the equation, all right? Group times, and then use the equality of complex numbers to solve um, for a and b, and therefore you get z. So if you put this in the equation, what you get is 2 plus 3, Z here is just a plus b i, right? Minus z bar is the conjugate of z, so that is a minus b i plus by i is equal to zero. Okay? So let's expand and group times. Okay? So uh, I get 2 plus 3a plus 3b i minus a plus b i plus 5 i is equal to zero, okay? So, I want to group the real parts and the imaginary part. For the real part, I have a two here, right? I have a two, I have three a, and then minus a here, that is two a, right? And then, for the imaginary part, I have a three b and a b, that means that it means four b, right? And I have a five here. I is equal to zero. Okay? So basically this and this will give me four b i, and that is five i. Okay? It's equal to zero. So I have a complex number on the left hand side and a complex number on the right. Note that the zero on the right hand side is a complex number as well. So zero there. Zero, the zero on the right hand side can be written as zero plus zero i. So it's a complex number. Okay? 
So using the quality of complex numbers, this is equal to zero implies that the real part has to be equal to zero, and the imaginary part, this guy, has to be zero as well. So this implies that 2a, 2 plus um, 2a is zero, is called that one, and 4b plus 5 has to be equal to zero as well. Alright, so you have two equations solved there. From one, I have two a is negative two, which implies that a is equal to negative one, right? And then from two, I have four b is equal to negative five, which implies that b is equal to negative five. So I have a and I have b, okay? Which means I have my complex number z. Plug in A and B here you have C. Therefore, Z is equal to A, which is negative 1, R uh, plus B I. So that is minus 5 over 4 I. Okay? So that is how you can apply um, the, the equality of complex numbers to solve problems. Let's solve uh, one more. Um, one more problem. So I'll start from here. So let's take this one. Here I have, um, we have example two. Uh, we want to solve, um, let's say z squared, right? More interesting probably, is equal to z2. We want to solve this. So again, I have a complex number on the, uh, z is complex. Okay, z is complex. You have a complex number on the left, complex on the right hand side. So how do you how do you solve that? So solution, we do the same thing. Let z is equal to a plus b i. And plug it into this, solve into that equation, and then you get a plus b i squared has to be equal to two i. Then you square this. So I have a squared. Note that b squared is b i squared is negative b squared. Right? Because the i squared is negative 1. And then I have plus 2abi minus equal to 2i. We can do the same thing as we did before, right? We can group um, the real part a squared minus b squared plus 2abi is equal to 2i. I mean, there are various ways. You can bring this to here and, and solve it as we did before. Okay? As long as you're consistent, you're good. Okay, so now we are we are we apply the equality of complex numbers. Say that the left hand side is a complex number, which means that the real part is equal to zero because the real part here is zero. And the imaginary part, which is 2a b here, has to be equal to 2. So applying the equality of complex numbers, we see that a squared minus b squared has to be equal to zero. Let's call that one. And two a b must be equal to two, which implies that a b is actually equal to one. Let's call this function two. Okay. So that's straightforward. From two, um, I mean we can we can we can solve for a or b. It doesn't really matter. So from this, A is equal to 1 over B, right? Okay, so we can call this thing. Then you can substitute. When we solve, we are solving 1 and 2 simultaneously. So you can use whatever technique you know. Okay, I'm going to do the substitution. A is 1 over B. I'm going to apply this into equation 1. Okay, so put, put 3 into 1. If I do that, I'm going to have a, I said a is 1 over b, so I'm going to have 1 over b squared minus b squared is equal to 0. Okay? So, and then what you can do, oh, did I do that? No, I didn't. Okay, so you have um, 1 over b squared minus b squared is equal to 0, 
right? Um, I'm checking something here. This is correct. This is imaginary, that is imaginary. Okay, that is good. So from here, this implies that if I multiply it by uh, b squared, I have 1 minus b to the power of 4, that is equal to what? Uh, is equal to 0, which implies that b squared b to the power of 4 is equal to 1. Alright? This implies that b squared is equal to the plus of minus 1. You see that? This is b squared squared. So b squared is the square root plus or minus square root of this. Alright? So b squared is actually plus or minus 1. So we see that b. So we see that b, um, b squared. b squared is either equal to 1 or b squared is negative 1. But note that A and B, right, when you say Z is A plus B I, both A and B must be real numbers, okay, from the definition of the complex number. So A and B must be real. So, which means that B squared minus 1 is unacceptable, it's impossible, right? Because B squared is plus negative 1, it's giving you complex numbers. But we want a real number, A, A and B must be which implies that b squared is equal to negative 1 is not possible. Therefore, b squared has to be equal to 1, which implies b is plus or minus 1. Okay? If b uh, is plus or minus 1, then we can solve for a from 3, right? From 3, a must be equal to 1 over b, but b is plus or minus 1, so a is plus or minus 1. Therefore, z, which we said was a plus bi, okay, has to be equal to um, a is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1i, right? b is 1 plus or minus 1, you multiply by i. So you have this. So if you like, this is plus or minus 1 plus i. As the solution to the, um, the equation that we were given. All right. So we have a um, we have a solution. Z equals uh, plus one plus i, or z is equal to negative one negative i as a solution to the equation. All right. Um, let's do one more example of quality of complex numbers, and then we'll be we'll be, uh, we'll be done with that. One more example. So we have. Let's, let's do this. So three find the square root of three plus four i. Okay, you have this example in your uh, your notes as well. You want to find the square root of uh, three plus four i. Okay. So what do you how do you do that? Again, we are going to apply the um, the equality of complex numbers. So what we'll do is we want the square root. So take the square root of this guy. So let the square root of 3 plus 4 i. Let this be equal to some complex number. Let's call that b plus b i as usual. And then we try to solve a and b. That's the plan. Alright? So it's a square root. So you can square both sides. When you square both sides, you're going to have 3 plus 4 i. Square root of the square root sign. And then square this side a plus bi squared, right? But we know to have expand this, this is squared b squared to a bi. Okay? This is 3 plus 4i. Which means that I have um, I have which implies that I'm going to group times a squared minus b squared. Um, what I want to do, okay, and then this and this will give me minus three. That's the real part. 
and then I had uh, two a b minus four i is equal to zero. So I just brought this to that side, right? I brought all of these guys to that side, okay? And I grouped them, so I have this. All right. Okay, so now I have real parts, imaginary parts, it's called to zero, so this has to be equal to zero and this must be equal to zero, right? So this implies that a squared minus b squared minus three has to be equal to zero, that is called an equation one. And then two ab minus four is zero, which implies ab is equal to two. All right, that's all this equation two. All right, so you have you have two equations that you can, um, you, can, you can solve. So you can use the same technique that we used before to solve for uh, A and B. All right? So, um, so if you have X from 2, I'm going, to let, I'm going to let B solve for B. B will be equal to 2 over 1, 2 over 8. So whatever I see, again, you can call this, call this 3 and put 3 into uh, one. Okay, if you do that, if you put three into uh, one, what you're going to get is this. We're going to get, we're going to get uh, a squared minus wherever I see b, I'm going to, I'm going to put two over a, right? So I have minus four over a squared, right? Minus three, and that is equal to zero. What by two by a squared, which implies a to the power four minus four three a squared must be equal to zero. So if you like a to the power four minus three a squared minus four is zero, it's a quadratic equation, right? Uh, if you want to see that, you can let, for instance, let x be b a squared. X is a squared, this is a squared squared, so this is x squared, right? Minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. So you can solve this once you get x, you put it here and solve for a. Okay? So from here, I have, let's say, quadratic negative 4, uh, 4 and negative 1, right? Uh, no, negative 4 and 1. This time, this is plus this is So you have this, alright? So this implies that x plus one and a half x minus four is equal to zero. Okay. Okay. So if this is the case, this implies that x is negative one or x is equal to four. So now you can you can go back here and say that this means that. Okay, don't forget about equation 3, B we said is 2 over A. So we'll come back to that. B is 2 over A. Okay, B is 2 over A. You can use that later. So now we have this. So from here, it implies A squared is negative 1 or A squared. A squared is equal to 4. But again, A has to be real, so this is not possible, okay? Since A is real, A squared is negative 1 is impossible or not possible. It's not possible, right? You can't have that. Which implies A squared has to be 4, which implies A is plus or minus root S, so plus or minus 2. Okay? So we have A. Then we can go back and solve for plus or minus. And solve for B. But we know B, right? But B is 2 over A. So that will be 2 over A to the left half of plus or minus 2. So plus or minus 1. 1. Two cancel out. Um, so you have so you have the roots, the square roots. I don't know if I use S or not, it should be square roots. The square roots of 3 plus 4i are a plus b when a is positive. This is also positive, right? Bi and 
minus 2 minus i. So I have 2 plus i and negative 2 minus i as the, um, the two square roots of the number 3 plus 4i. Alright? Now later on we'll come to um, a more general approach to finding the square roots of complex numbers. But this is one way you can solve for complex numbers, the roots of complex numbers, using the, the equality of complex numbers. Alright? So I will end this lecture here. Uh, the next the next lecture will be on the Adam diagram. How you represent complex numbers on the plane. Alright? Okay, so I'll get back to you later.